Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 30th of May. Campaigning for world's largest elections concludes in India, PM Modi sets record. Pakistani nuclear strategy excludes no first use policy, says top government aid. And UN officials highlight deteriorating situation of women in Afghanistan under Taliban rule. And now for all the details. The campaign for the India's gigantic election ended on Thursday ahead of the seventh and last phase of polling on the 1st of June. The voters from 57 Lok Sabha constituencies spread across eight states and union territories will exercise their franchisee in the seventh and final phase of polling on Saturday, marking the end of about 44-day long polling exercise. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the BJP's biggest star campaigner, concluded his campaign in Hoshiarpur, where he emphasized his government's commitment to development and heritage preservation. PM Modi also criticized the self-serving politics of Congress and the India Alliance and accused them of indulging in vote bank politics and snatching the reservation of SC, ST and OBC. लगातार एससी एसटी ओबीसी के आरक्षण की रक्षा की है ये कांग्रेस और इंडी गठबंधन वाले मेरी इस कोशिश से भी भड़के हुए हैं दरअसल आरक्षण को लेकर इनके खुद के इरादे बहुत खतरनाक है इनका पूरा ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड एससी एसटी ओबीसी का आरक्षण छीनने का रहा है मीनवाइल ऑपोजिशन लीडर राहुल गांधी वाइल कैंपेनिंग इन बालासोर क्लेम दैट बीजेपी एंड बीजेडी आर वर्किंग एज एन अलायंस एंड अलेज्ड दैट दी पार्टनरशिप इज फोकस्ड ऑन स्टीलिंग द वेल्थ माइंस एंड प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ओडिशा गांधी इम्फेसाइज द आइडियोलॉजिकल बैटल बिटवीन द बीजेपी एंड द इंडिया अलायंस which he asserts is committed to protecting the Indian constitution. The BJP-led NDA is seeking a record third term. I fight for the BJP. Naveen Patnaik Ji is working here for the BJP. These two are one. They are going to partnership. And the thing is clear. The goal of the partnership is the goal of the people of Urissa. आपके जो माइंस हैं, आपके जो संपत्ति है, उसको चोरी करने का है, अरबपति बनाने का है। The Morgan Stanley, in its latest report on Wednesday, stated that growth in India, which already is strong and surging, may become more broad-based across both the consumer and business spending side. The Global Investment Bank attributed India's firm growth to three megatrends that is global offshoring, digitalization and energy transition. The report has forecasted 6.8% growth in 2024 and 6.5% the next and thinks inflation will stay within policy makers' comfort zone. India's GDP grew at a massive 8.4% during the October-December quarter of the financial year 2023-24 and the country continued to remain the fastest growing major economy. The size of India's GDP is currently ranked fifth after the US, China, Germany and Japan. It overtook the UK in 2022. Advisor to Pakistan's National Command Authority, Veteran Lieutenant General Khalid Ahmed Kidbay said on Wednesday that Pakistan doesn't have a no first use policy regarding its nuclear arsenal and added that its nukes are weapons of peace. Speaking at a seminar held to commemorate the anniversary of Pakistan's decades-old nuclear test, Kidbay in a threatening tone said there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that it is Pakistan's nuclear capability 
that enables every Pakistani leader the liberty, dignity and courage to look into India's eye and not blink. Following India's successful testing in 1998, Pakistan reciprocated the action in the nuclear arms race and detonated five nuclear devices in Chagai district of Balochistan, making it the seventh nation to possess nuclear weapons. While India has declared a policy of no first use, Pakistan has maintained the first strike policy if the need arises. Meanwhile, Baloch activists staged anti-Pakistan protests in the UK and the Netherlands this week to mark the Black Day when Pakistan conducted nuclear tests in Balochistan in the year 1998. A report. Members of the Free Balochistan Movement and the Baloch Diaspora staged anti-Pakistan protests this week in the Netherlands and the United Kingdom against the nuclear tests carried out on May 28, 1998 in Balochistan. The protesters highlighted countless atrocities against the Baloch people who are still suffering from the adverse effects of the nuclear tests. They urged the UN and the international community to put a complete ban on Pakistan's nuclear weapons, saying that Pakistan is a big threat to the whole world. We appeal to the international community, International Court of Justice to put a complete ban on Pakistani nuclear program so that not only Balochistan and the region remain safe, rather the whole world should get rid of this danger because Pakistan's nuclear program was never for peaceful purposes and never will be. Activists have long blamed innocent Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state, while it exploits their natural resources. Underscoring the deteriorating situation of women in Afghanistan under Taliban's rule, United Nations officials on Wednesday again raised concerns about the matter and said their state is a lost cause in the country. Since Kabul fell to Taliban in 2021, the regime has been imposing severe restrictions on women, banning them from work, public places and even from studying beyond sixth grade. More than two and a half years have passed, but the Taliban has yet to make any new statements regarding the reopening of schools for girls above sixth grade. The officials highlighted they have been continuously pushing the Taliban on the issue of women while stating the figures said 1.1 million girls are without schooling since the 2021 ban in Afghanistan. The Taliban has long claimed that women's rights in the country are ensured within the framework of Islamic law. Amid reports of former military personnel from Sri Lanka joining as mercenaries in Russia-Ukraine conflict, Colombo on Wednesday announced Russia needs to have clearance from Sri Lankan Defence Ministry for issuing visit visa to ex-servicemen. The decision came after Foreign Minister Al Sabri met Russian Ambassador to Sri Lanka and held discussions on the issue of deployment of Lankan nationals in Russia offensive action against Ukraine. In a post on X, Sabri said both sides agreed on immediate steps to resolve these issues as he informed about the government decision for additional clearance for visa being issued to former military personnel. Colombo has repeatedly warned its citizens against travelling to the conflict zone to join the fighting. Authorities say at least 16 of its citizens have been killed so far in the conflict, while fate of 100 others is unknown. A high-level delegation led by Deputy Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka is likely to visit Russia to facilitate further dialogue in coming days. As Nepal marked the 71st International Sagar Day on Wednesday, the Nepali Sherpa community called for action to mitigate the effects of climate change as it continues to threaten the Sherpas, the ebb originals of the mountains in Nepal. Addressing an event in Kathmandu to commemorate International Everest Day, Pasang Tendi Sherpa, who has submitted Everest 17 times, expressed concern as he highlighted the rapid increase in the rate of glacial melt within the last 10 years. He said, the melting of glaciers has changed the stability of the ice on the world's tallest peak, endangering the lives of the climbers. 
अलग हर एक यो क्लाइमेट चेंज को कुरान होने का दर है ना सब कुछ नहीं दिन पटे दिन हिमाल मा सब कुछ नहीं ग्लेशियर और मेल्ट भाई रखा आवश्यक था मौत तहान शु कि यहाँ से सब को माइले वीडियो मा पर प्रत्यक्ष यार जहाँ हम रुसा के होंजे जो सलाह था कुसरे भाई कुसरे मैजिक भाई रहते थे ग्लेशियर आपने हिमालय को बनाया � दस वर्ष से बंदा, दस वर्ष देखिए यहाँ तक ग्लेशियर मेल्टिंग को रेशियो इतनी हाईली बॉर्डर का आप बता, तो ग्लेशियर मेल्टिंग लगा देखिए रे होल माउंटेन को जैसे आइस को कंडीशन लाइन है एकदम इस्टेबल और अनिस्टेबल बना को आवश्यक है, तो इस कारण लगा देखिए यो लगा देखिए क्लाइमेट्स रुको जै the Sherpa community of Nepal is mainly dependent on mountaineering and expeditions. They are highly recognized as elite mountaineers and experts in high altitude adventures. While the Sherpas have been helping and setting records, there is a renewed call for the protection of the Himalayas, which is their main source of income. Research indicates Mount Everest's glaciers have lost 2,000 years of ice in just the past 30 years. Reports say that the world's tallest peak is undergoing unprecedented and largely irreversible change. Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dehil addressing the event reiterated that the Himalayan nation has been raising the issue at various international forums to draw the attention of the international community to the issue of climate change and climate justice. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.